Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, today's topic is CCP board generation of PWM waveform. That means we will discuss how to generate PWM waveform using CCP model of uh, PIC microcontroller. इससे पहले uh, मैंने एक्सप्लेन किया है इससे पहले के सेशन में मैंने एक्सप्लेन किया व्हाट इज सीसीपी मोड एंड ऑल दैट टुडे वी विल डिस्कस हाउ टू जनरेट पीडब्ल्यूएम वेवफॉर्म पल्स विद मॉड्यूलेटेड सिग्नल जनरेटेड यूजिंग सीसीपी मोड इज बेसिकली यूज्ड टू कंट्रोल द स्पीड ऑफ डीसी मोटर प्रेजेंटली वी आर ओनली टॉकिंग अबाउट जनरेशन ऑफ पीडब्ल्यूएम सिग्नल फ्रॉम द एग्जाम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू वी मे एक्सपेक्ट द क्वेश्चन लाइक दिस explain how the pwm waveform is generated using ccp mode of pic microcontroller so we will discuss first we will discuss the basic things related to this there are two parts in case of pwm that is pulse width modulation first is duty cycle which is also called on pulse and second is period of a pulse maine ek basic diagram draw kiya hai so this on cycle every signal like like uh, this is uh, some kind of square wave this is on pulse this is off pulse so the period of on pulse is called duty cycle whereas the combination i mean combined value of on and off pulse is called as period of a signal ye aap logon ko yaad rakhna hai this is important rather this period is related to frequency or time and this value is stored in PR2 register. ये हम लोग प्रोग्राम लिखते वक्त ये विल डिस्कस दिस थिंग इन मोर डिटेल सेकेंड ड्यूटी साइकिल जैसे मैंने बताया ऑन पल्स का जो पीरियड है दैट इज ड्यूटी साइकिल और जो ऑन पल्स है दैट इज अ ड्यूटी साइकिल सो ड्यूटी साइकिल इज द काउंट रिलेटेड टू ऑन पल्स इट इज स्टोर्ड दिस वैल्यू इज स्टोर्ड इन सी सी पी आर वन एल रजिस्टर दैट मीन लोअर रजिस्टर ऑफ सी सी पी आर वन इसके पहले के वीडियो में मैंने डिटेल में एक्सप्लेन किया वॉट इज दिस सी सी पी आर वन आर वन एल रजिस्टर एंड सो वन नाउ लुक एट दिस वे फॉर्म अलग अलग ड्यूटी साइकिल के वे फॉर्म हम लोग जनरेट कर सकते हैं फॉर एग्जाम्पल If I want to generate a waveform of duty cycle 25%, waveform will be like this. बहुत सिंपल है जैसे एक वेवफॉर्म को मैंने यहां सपोज दिस इज वन टू थ्री फोर चार पार्ट में डिवाइड किया ऑन पल्स इज ओनली फॉर वन फोर्थ वन फोर्थ पार्ट सो द ड्यूटी साइकिल आई मीन इट्स ऑन पल्स ड्यूरेशन इज ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट सेकेंड ड्यूटी साइकिल इज फिफ्टी परसेंट थर्ड ड्यूटी साइकिल इन दिस वेवफॉर्म इज सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट एंड फोर्थ ड्यूटी साइकिल इज हंड्रेड परसेंट सो अकॉर्डिंगली अकॉर्डिंग टू द रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ ड्यूटी साइकिल वी कैन वेल जनरेट एनी रिक्वायर्ड वे ऑफ फॉर्म नाउ टू कैलकुलेट द वैल्यू ऑफ पी आर टू वी हैव टू मेक यूज ऑफ दिस फॉर्मुला फॉर्मुला इज एफ ऑसुलेटर दैट इज ऑसुलेटर फ्रिक्वेंसी वी नो दैट इफ द वैल्यू इज नॉट गिवन वी हैव टू चूज द वैल्यू देन डिवाइडेड बाय एफ पी डब्ल्यू एम बेसिकली TPWM that is time related to PWM is the required PWM period that will be mentioned in the question ki what should be the period of PWM we have found or the frequency will be mentioned we know that this F PWM that is frequency of PWM we have found is the reciprocal of time required for time period related to PWM we have found and this value n see f oscillator divided by f pwm into 4 into n this value n is the prescale value we already discussed such things in earlier video prescale value is basically uh, dependent on the bits uh, that we can store in timer to control register so using this formula we can calculate the value of pr2 now we have discussed that the value related to duty cycle i mean the count related to duty cycle is stored in ccp r1 l register actually for uh, the calculation of duty cycle values we are supposed to use 10 bit register out of this 8 bits are from ccp r1 l register 2 bits are from ccp1 control register ye bhi last video mein maine explain kiya hai present as far as this pwm waveform is concerned only 2 bits are required uh, from ccp1 control register so this is the combination how do refer this table suppose decimal there is no decimal point that means zero decimal point then the contents of dc1 b2 and dc1 b1 are zero zero suppose we want decimal point 
point twenty five. Then contents will should be zero one and so on. So while selecting a particular value of duty cycle, we have to refer this table. Now let us perform one calculation so that this concept will be more clear to you. Suppose the given frequency of uh, PWM waveform, that is F PWM, is given as two point five kilohertz. And pre scale is that is value of n is sixteen. And suppose we want fifty percent duty cycle. Now let us perform the calculations for this. So if value of f oscillator is not mentioned, we know that value of f oscillator we have to choose it ten megahertz. First, calculate the value of PR2. We have this formula. So, from this formula, I will get the value of PR2. That is F oscillator, which is 10 megahertz. That is 10 into 10 raised to 6 hertz divided by F PWM. That is 2.5 kilohertz. So, I will write it like this: 2.5 into 10 raised to 3, because value is given in kilohertz. 2.5 kilohertz. So, 2.5 into 10 raised to 3 into 4 into 16. Value of N is given as 16. This value. Minus one. So if you solve this value, the answer will be sixty-two. Now we want fifty percent duty cycle. So sixty-two, fifty percent of sixty-two. That is one half of sixty-two. So we want the count equals to thirty-one. So this is related to the count thirty-one. Now since the required value of PRB is sixty-two, and for fifty percent duty cycle, we want value. Our count to be thirty one. Actually, it is thirty one point zero because there is no decimal point. So, corresponding to this, I have to select this combination, these two bits, DCB one, B two, and DCB one, B one at zero zero. Suppose answer I say at a kisi calculation me thirty one point five zero, thirty one point five. Agar aise calculation aata hai. So, for this point five, we will select the combination one zero. So, for this. Uh, DCB two and one combination will be one zero. This is the way how to do the calculation related to the value of PR two and duty cycle. Now let us discuss the block diagram of PWM mode. We have discussed the basics of PWM mode. So we have discussed that T on is related to duty cycle, whereas on period and off period is corresponding to period of the corresponding waveform. This is the block diagram. Actually, a uh, PWM signal is generated at RC two, that is pin number uh, two of port C, or CCM pin. So we are using two comparators and a timer two. I have shown two registers, that is CCP R one L and CCP R one H. The count is initially loaded in CCP R one L. Then microcontroller will transfer that count to CCP R one H. Before that, initially the timer two is reset. That is timer two is all zeros. Then, with the increment in every clock pulse, the increment in the value of timer two takes place. That is timer two contents goes on incrementing by one. So initially, contents of timer two is compared with CCP R one H. The same ne bola bola user has to enter the count in CCP R one L. Microcontroller will transfer it to CCP R one H. Comparator one will compare the contents of timer two with the contents of CCP R one H. And first, initially, the flip flop will be reset because this is the SR flip flop. Output of comparator one is given to reset pin. So initially, after matching means whenever comparator one finds matching between contents of timer two and the contents of CCP R one H, then it will reset the flip flop. That means output of flip flop will be zero. Similarly, PR two count will be initially zero. That means uh, contents of this register. Then T on that is this duty cycle. Is corresponding to count in CCP R one H register. Initially, output is low, and comparator two starts comparing contents of TR two, that is TMR two, with PR two. 
So we know that while while writing the program, this concept will be more clear to you. We'll have to calculate the value of PR two, and then uh, this timer two or comp uh, comparator two will compare the contents of PR two and timer two. Whenever matching is found, then it will generate a set signal for the flip flop. So it sets flip flop and output switches from zero to one. There are two bits TB zero. It, it this indicates bits from internal clock and TB one. It indicates clear timer CCPX pin. So this is about the generalized uh, block diagram uh, of the generation of PWM wave. Now let us discuss one program. Question is write a program for one kilohertz. Then uh, this one kilohertz means frequency of uh, PWM wave for ten percent duty cycle. PWM waveform. So first, let us perform the calculations. We already discussed PR2 ka value calculate करने के लिए formula use करना है. F oscillator if not given, we have to consider this value 10 megahertz. So 10 into 10 raised to 6. F PWM. This is given in the question. 1 kilo. So 1 into 10 raised to 3. 4 as it is. Value of n. Pre-scaling factor is not mentioned in the question. So let us assume n is equal to 16. So PR2 will be 155. Now 10% duty cycle is mentioned. So 10% of 155 will be 15.5. That means contents of register CCPR1L will be 15. And about this 0.5 decimal factor, when I already explained here, the corresponding bits that is DCB2 and DCB1 are 10 for uh, 0.5 decimal factor. Now about the program. First, we will include the header file, then we will uh, clear this CCP1 control register, load PR2 with 155, this value, then CCP R1L 15, we have done this calculation, then TRI SC trace bits, TRI SC2 equals to 0. By making use of this command, we are activating this CCP1 pin as an output from where we will get the PWM waveform. Next is T2 control register that is 0x03. Now, we have discussed this. 16 prescale value use karenge. Because the question is value n ka nahi diya tha. So, we are assuming this value. Corresponding bits related to this register bit number 1 and 0. The condition is 1x for 16 prescale. This x can be 0 or 1. So if I will assume x is equal to 1, so it will be 1, 1. So T2 con contents will be 0, x, 0, 3. If I will assume this x as 0, it will be 1, 0 and this value will be 0, x, 0, 2. Now, CCP1 control register, we have to set it for PWM mode and corresponding bits of DC1, B2 and DC1, B1 must be 1, 0. This is corresponding to this decimal factor of 0.5. So we are choosing this value, then timer 2 is equals to 0. Please refer this video for detailed discussions of uh, this T2 con and CCP1 con. Then initially set uh, reset the timer 2. Then next command is T2 control bits dot timer 2 on is equals to 1. So we are setting this timer, we are starting the timer while 1 apply a loop. PI R1 bits dot this flag. Initially, we have to uh, set this flag. See, once the count is reached, flag will be automatically generated. So, initially, we are setting this flag to 0. Now, condition is while this flag equals to equals to 0, we have to continue this loop. That means we want to generate this type of waveform like this. Suppose starting point is from this. So, if the condition remains as it is then this much time period should be corresponding to on pulse so we'll have to wait for that much time period that's why this command is given so accordingly we can generate this uh, pwm waveform now one of the most important application of uh, pwm wave is controlling the speed of dc motor <clears throat> from the exam point of view we may expect the question draw interfacing diagram for DC motor speed controller using PIC 18F micro controller and explain the flow graph. So this is the interfacing diagram. The basics of 
controlling uh, the speed of a DC motor is we know that in case of uh, PWM wave we can vary the duty cycle but the duty cycle change kar sakte even though the voltage is constant by changing the duty cycle we can change the amount of power delivered uh, to the DC motor and accordingly the speed of a DC motor can be controlled this is the basics how the DC motor speed can be controlled using peak microcontroller so this is the interfacing diagram we are using two pins pin number two of port b that is rb2 it is used as a output uh, pin rc2 that is pin number two of port c is used as an input pin so two signals are required one is input another is output this is basically opto isolator as the name indicates it optically isolates the peak microcontroller and the remaining diagram that is the DC motor. So this is the block for opto isolator which is also called opto coupler. It consists of LED and photo transistor. Since the uh, switching takes place because of the photons it provides isolation between two stages. Now we are using one transistor TIP120 and uh, look at the diagram here the motor is connected this function of this uh, 0.1 microfarad capacitor is basically to avoid the electromagnetic interference now about the uh, flow graph first initialize rb2 as an output port output then initialize rc2 as an input port look at the diagram this is this pin is acting as an input here I have shown one switch. So depending on the position of switch, let us assume that if the switch is closed and if the switch is open, we are assuming two conditions. That means whenever switch value of switch is one and whenever value of switch is zero. So we will assume that whenever switch is one, we should apply the PWM waveform having 50% duty cycle and whenever switch uh, is zero that is switch is off we have to apply PWM waveform of 75% uh, duty cycle so as we discussed by changing the duty cycle we can change the speed of motor so according to the uh, positions of switch I mean according to the contents of switch that is one or zero the duty cycle of the PWM wave can be changed and speed of a motor can be varied, can be controlled. Now these are all current limiting registers. So first initialize RB2 as an output port, initialize RC2 as an input. If we, we, we have to check this condition, is switch is equals to one, that means whether switch is on or off. So when switch is one, then rotate DC motor with 50% duty cycle. This is clear cut assumption. It will be mentioned if you want to write the program, it will be clearly mentioned in the program that what condition of a switch you need, you need to con, uh, consider. So if switch is closed, I have assumed that the uh, rotation of DC motor takes place with 50% uh, duty cycle. If no, that means if switch is zero, if switch is not equal to one, if no, then rotate DC motor with 75% duty cycle. So accordingly the speed can be changed by changing the position uh, of a switch that means by uh, closing the switch or opening the switch. Then again this loop uh, repeats. So this is the way how you can interface DC motor to the PIC 18F microcontroller. So dear students that's it for today's session. So thank you. Thanks a lot for watching this video.